Yo guys, what's up? It's Tom, Views from the Link TV, back at you with the Weekly Chirp. Steve actually got to go to the Dodgers game tonight, and I, I guess I could say I'm jealous. I don't really like baseball, but he's been to two Dodgers games over the last three days. Uh, he went with a friend on uh, Saturday, I believe it was, or Sunday, and, uh, and tonight gets to go with this company, so he's not here, but he's having a good time at the game. Um, you know, always good weather, good baseball weather in LA, but you know, summer, summer baseball, things like that, it's always good weather for baseball games, so just the season they're in. But um, anyway, let's, uh, let's get into uh, some Eagles news. Um, forget the Dodgers, right? Uh, yeah, so the Eagles really, I mean, there's, there's nothing um, crazy going on right now. Obviously, it's the, there's really nothing at all going on right now, to be honest with you. Um, it's the off-season period where you know guys are resting up. They're you know they're getting ready for training camp, which is at the end of the month of July. So you know everyone's getting prepared for that. Um, guys are staying in shape and uh, and working out still. And you know that's that's just what that's just what football players do. They they have that off-season, but they they work out and they keep they keep up with everything. Their regimens and um, you know some do some some so much. Uh, you know, don't really care to, and those are usually the guys that um, that don't make it. So I mean, guys work, guys are working hard right now still to stay in shape for camp, but um, you know, no real news. So uh, a report came out about um, Alshon Jeffrey, um, Mike Grow, the receivers coach, saying Alshon Jeffrey has had what he thinks is his best off season since 2013 when he came and had a breakout season. Um, and you know, obviously that's just coach speak. They're gonna, you know, obviously say the guy's looking great, and playing great, and things like that. Um, but I think there's truth to it. I mean, you look at Alshon Jeffrey, and you think this is a guy that was on a bad Bears team for the last two years. He had a couple good seasons before that, but as injuries started to happen a little more for him, um, and it just kind of piled up with uh, his suspension for PEDs. And I think that the team's, you know, misfortune um, also kind of just had him in a funk. And uh, it's it's real. They're, they're human players. Uh, you know, obviously these guys are, are are people and they have feelings and they have emotions. And mentally, you know, I think that the change of scenery has him working very hard to, to be what he knows he can be and what he's been before. Um, I think that having that that chip on his shoulder where he comes in, he signs a one-year deal. I, I think that he understands that. He doesn't talk or sound like a guy that doesn't want football. Like Chip Kelly honestly said this best. He wanted guys that loved football, not what football will get them. So it's a guy that loves the game and just knows the money. You know, the money is secondhand. It's going to come. So he comes in, he takes this one-year deal because he fit, he would rather have had that, what the Eagles could give him at the time or what they were willing to give him at the time. He would rather prove here that he can be something special so that he can stay and build camaraderie with Wentz and become his number one receiver. And also on a team that, you know, a lot of people see a lot of potential in. It's a young team. They're, they're up and coming. So he chose that over you know, longer, maybe more lucrative contracts um, elsewhere. And, and that's, you know, that speaks volumes, not about, you know, it definitely speaks volumes about where, what the reputation of the Eagles is potentially around the league um, with guys wanting to play with Wentz and coming here and things like that. Um, but it speaks volumes about Alshon Jeffrey as well. It's, it shows you that he's a guy that wanted to, he knew he, he had to build something. He's not just trying to cash a paycheck. He wants to build something and he wants to be, you know, the top receiver and the guy that they all say, you know, he's the number one receiver on that team, bona fide, clear cut guy and going to make the plays and, you know, get the touchdowns, get the tough yards, you know, to win, win the games for, for his team. And that's something we didn't have. And, um, and I think that you're going to see a really motivated Alshon Jeffrey working hard, um, staying healthy, uh, doing everything he can. To, to stay healthy at least and um, I think that uh, Mike Groh is definitely going to help him continue to develop you know he's only 27 he's about to be going into his prime so I mean why not build this thing up with Wentz and 
you know, for the next three, four years, have a really special receiver uh, quarterback connection. And that's what Alshon Jeffries in Philly to do. And, and that's why he came here. And that's, I really, you know, I really, I really love the, I love the pickup. I can't say it enough. Um, you know, speaking of building something with Carson Wentz, I think that, you know, Carson Wentz is still being, you know, a little bit, I mean, there's always going to be those rival fans that hate Wentz and things like that, but I think that you have to be impressed what that guy was dealt and how he came out and, and played as a rookie. I mean, you're going to look at other guys that may, you know, have had better rookie years or whatever the case may be, but, um, you know, obviously the easy one is Dak Prescott, who had an unbelievable rookie year, and, um, and I, but I think you have to look at guys that are more comparable to Wentz and, you know, how they how they panned out in the NFL, um, more comparable to Wentz as far as the rookie year they had because Dak was in a very unique situation, and um, and I've never seen anything like that before. I really haven't. I've well, you know, I, I, I can't say I've never seen anything like that. I think that when Ben Roethlisberger took over the Steelers, they had a team that was ready to win with a veteran coach that, you know, obviously you needed a guy like Ben Roethlisberger to be able to make big plays as, as the Cowboys need Prescott, but when he stepped under center, he was ready to go and it had a lot to do with the system they had in place and the players that were on that team helping make all of that happen. And all Ben Roethlisberger had to do was be himself. And I mean, the bottom line is that Carson Wentz in 2016, he could not be himself. He had to force a lot. I mean, he likes throwing the ball up and down the field, um, but those, the, that was that was when you know balls looked forced and were picked off because he's going you know downfield to receivers who really can't get open. They can't make catches, and these aren't excuses for Carson Wentz. I mean, if the guy was just you know missing wide open receivers or not reading coverages the right way and things like that, I'd be a little concerned, but. He would make, you know, reads and guys weren't getting open. He would, you know, make throws. He has the arm strength. He has the willingness to throw the ball downfield and give his receivers a chance to make a play. But guys weren't open. Guys weren't willing to make plays. Guys weren't fighting for balls, going up over guys. And, I mean, that's part of how, you know, their talent's not that great. They're a bunch of young receivers, underdeveloped. And I think that Carson Wentz, when he stepped into – um you know, this thing is the third stringer starting camp and the whirlwind that took place after that for him to be the starter. I mean, I think there was good reason that Doug Peterson and, you know, the staff thought it was maybe a good idea to sit this guy on the bench for his first year. This team just wasn't really proven at all. I mean, you look at the skill positions on offense and no one was the, any anything. I mean, Jordan Matthews was the best receiver, exclusively a slot guy who really had never performed um, any better than, you know, 800, 900-some yards. I mean, he had 997 uh, a, a year back or whatever the case was with that. Um, as a slot guy, exclusively really working from the slot. So, I mean, he didn't really – he didn't he definitely didn't take a step forward. And, you know, obviously learning the new chemistry with everyone is a big thing. But not even talking about that, it's just, you know, the fact that he – Carson Wentz just couldn't be himself. He couldn't throw the ball downfield and expect guys to make big plays for him. Um, he just couldn't do that. And I think that that's, that's the biggest thing, as simple as you can put it, with quarterbacks, um, what their job is, is it's to be themselves. It's to lead by example. It's to naturally take over a locker room. And it's just it's just to be be themselves in, in a sense where you want your best skills, the best assets in your skill set to come forward and you, you need to use those to the best of your ability and they need to be the ones that are highlighted there you know those are the things you want to see and without guys that can get separation or make plays downfield Carson Wentz's best skill which is his ability to throw the ball down the field in my personal opinion is hindered and I mean people were saying that he's not accurate down the field and I, while I think there's a couple throws and some things he needs to clean up and there were definitely a couple throws that were misses and things like that I think that that's actually one of his best skills is putting the ball down the field 40 50 yards down the field 
in the air and and letting a guy run underneath it and make a play. I mean, you're telling me that if the Eagles had a guy like, you know, like a Deshaun Jackson that you throw the ball up 40 yards, he's not going to beat the cornerback down the field and catch it. I mean, that's what makes it easy on a quarterback, and that's what Wentz lacked is players that can make plays downfield consistently, getting open, beating coverages, making catches, making some tough catches. And and I think that, you know, any quarterback really, it's, it's a passing league now. These quarterbacks have huge arms. They like to throw the ball downfield. And I think, I think that you just have to understand that if you don't have a player that can go get the ball, you're not going to throw it down. You're not just going to continue to throw it downfield to covered receivers that can't make plays. So I think that, um, guys, guys that come in the league and, and have immediate success are quarterbacks that are in offenses that have um, a, 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 an identity and, and playmakers and a run game and an offensive line. And I think that the Eagles were a little weary on what they had last year as far as, um, or a little wary, weary, was like, um, but I, th- I really do. I really think that they were, they were very, um, cautious about it and that's why they didn't want Wentz to start and you know you saw what happened when he did I mean I think they were a little better than they they're I think they were a little better record wise with seven wins than I would have thought if you were to tell me everything that was going to happen I would I would guess that we just fall apart and really 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 stink but I mean I think they they won a lot of tough games and I think that um they fought in a lot of games that were tough losses and um, and yeah, I think that uh, I really I really do think Wentz is going to surprise a lot of people that are doubting him this year because he's finally got guys that are going to allow him to be himself, um, and and that's the bottom line. So um, I'm actually you know writing a very long form article on Carson Wentz's rookie year, outlining everything that happened um, leading up to you know the end of the season pretty much um just kind of outlining what he was dealt with his, what he had to deal with his rookie year somewhat what i've just talked about but a little more in depth showing you know different things and um and i think that the improvement's going to be very very great and uh and and all that being said he didn't really have the worst statistical rookie season or really in general if you watch the games he was really the guy that the coaching staff leaned on to make plays so um he showed, you know, a lot of heart, I think, and I think a lot of players respect that, and that's why a guy like Alshon Jeffrey decided this was the place for him. So it, it all goes hand in hand. But um, so it's pretty pretty cool announcement we've got. Um, you know, just going to throw it out there for our YouTube uh, subscribers that might not have um, seen the news or heard the news yet. Um, we, we, we actually announced it a couple times because um, it was supposed to happen a couple times, but... Finally, we are shooting our um, uh, a, a pilot episode for a show that me and Steve, um, my other if for first time watchers, got usually have a uh, another another guy with me doing uh, more hosting, and you know I don't have to talk as much because he can break it up with things. So um, you know you get the rant when when I'm the only guy you know in the building. So. Anyway, me me and my he's my roommate as well. We live in Los Angeles, and we are you know pursuing screenwriting and filmmaking and that's why we came out here and we we, you know we love doing it we put a lot of hard work into it and we wrote a a sitcom um, series about Philadelphia sports fans and um, we're shooting the pilot episode by ourselves we have our own actors we have you know we're we're shooting it I'm I'm the director of uh, the the show and um, the shoot at least and Steve is actually going to be, you know, in the show. So, um, you know, we're, we're kind of, yeah, he's, he's, it's cool. He's, you know, pursuing some acting and stuff and just kind of get his foot in the door. Really anywhere we, anywhere we can. That's what we're trying to do. So um, we both majored in, in college and production and, you know, that includes video editing, includes all that stuff. So a little, you know, if you guys didn't know that, there's a little background on us. And, uh, and, that's, and that's what we came out here for. And, you know, we're diehard Philly guys, but... Uh, we had to pursue our goals and dreams in that, and um, and it's pretty cool because we raised money. Thank you again to our friends and family for donating, but we raised money back in October, and um, it, it all came together. We raised money, uh, or no, I'm sorry, not back in October. It was, I think it was back in back in August. 
it was last year when we when we moved out here. I know that it was it was uh, it was a while ago. It feels. I mean, it, it was. It was it was almost a year ago now. So um, we're finally getting it together. And uh, August nineteenth and August twentieth, Saturday and Sunday, those are our shoot dates. Um, we it's going to be a quick shoot. It's just a pilot episode, which is just the first somewhat concept episode of what the show can be and uh and we're shooting it in chester pennsylvania so if you if you would like to you know come and be an extra that's kind of what we need um we need extras and you know we invite everyone to come out so um if you're on facebook uh you can you can look me or steve up on facebook maybe comment below in the comment section and um and let us know that you're interested in, in stopping by uh and and we you know we have plenty of plenty of room for extras it's going to be you know pretty much just a big um somewhat of you know we're going to have food for everyone it's going to be somewhat of a a little bit of a good time so um you know come, please come bring f friends family um you know, again it's in chester pennsylvania it's not out in los angeles we're flying home um, that's where all our actors are that we casted. Um, that's where every everybody's at. So um, that's that's where we have to shoot it because you know it's our hometown and, and that's what we're doing. So it's about Philly sports fans again. So if you follow this channel, you're probably a Philly sports fan. You know how to be a Philly sports fan. So please get in touch. You know we have a Facebook group for it. Um, the rain dates are just going to be the weekends that follow every weekend after. So if it rains. We're not going to come and do it in the rain. Uh, we need good weather for this. So we're going 19th and 20th. And if that doesn't work out, then we're going to go to the next weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and the next weekend until, until we get it. So um, we'll, we'll have some good luck there, um, you know, at some point. Hopefully the first weekend we do it. But you never know. It's August. doesn't rain a whole lot. So keep your fingers crossed for that. But, you know, we had to cancel this shoot. We were supposed to shoot it in December, but it fell through because of bad weather and um and we've since changed up a lot of things that we're doing with it so again thank you guys for watching views from the link tv please keep supporting we're you know we're, we're doing our thing out here so uh just keep supporting and um keep watching the channel and bringing you the eagles news and follow the twitter instagram all that stuff um you know and keep your eyes peeled for you know anything we're you know, anything you guys want to want to see, want to hear about, we got you. So thanks for supporting again, and uh, and we'll see you on, or I'll see you, and Steve will hopefully see you on Thursday for um, Bird Buzz. So uh, can't wait. Um, have a good night, guys.